Hey guys, it's Brendan. Thanks for joining me again on my channel. Welcome down here to the lair uh, again this evening. So what we are going to be covering today is the uh, build of the FMS 80 millimeter Futura version two. So my goal for tonight, as I covered with you on the unboxing video, was just simply some of the things that I found that I was kind of um, disappointed in with this version, but not the end of the world because we can do things about it, how we fix those, some of the tips and tricks and, um, you know, the, the build of this plane. So very quick, first things first. So I'm going to do everything with this build uh, in an untime-lapsed version. So the video may turn out to be uh, a little bit long, but the things that I will cover in here will be literally everything from how to do um, taping of the hinges, the assembly of the Futura, the balancing, calibrating of the ESCs, programming of the radio, um, full setups. So everything that I'm going to do on this, I am literally going to do with you guys watching in a uh, full recorded version. So if you're a beginner and you're looking for tips on setting up radios or for installation or whatever, I'll show you the way I do things. Not to say that it's going to be the best or the most perfect version out there, but I have very few problems with uh, equipment or failures or reception or anything like that. So uh, I want to go through those things with you, um, literally step by step. You're going to see how I balance it, um, weighting of batteries, battery choices. We'll look at some of that stuff. So this may turn out to be a longer version. If you want to join along with me, um, please feel free. Watch. If you liked it, then like it, subscribe, uh, share the stuff. But this is going to turn out to be kind of a beginner's version of how we get through this build. So uh, otherwise, I think you can smack this thing together with 10 screws in literally three minutes. Um, but I want to cover all the things with you that people I see ask on groups and forums and Facebook and everything else. Hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? And again, sharing of information across the internet, dude, it's a wonderful thing, right? So um, let me get the GoPro here unhooked. We'll get it down here mounted because you don't need to look at this ugly mug all night, right? And um, I'm going to have this just focused in on pieces so you guys can see what's going on and uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. So um, let me get you down from there and we'll get started. All right, so <clears throat> hopefully everything that we do here, you're going to be able to see and you'll be able to check out. So first things first, let's start with um, taping of hinges. So on the Futura, on the flaps, I had to install tape on the inside. I opted to do it there rather than here on the underside. There's just a lot of graphics and um, decals and stuff like that on there and paint. So I didn't want to just lay a strip over there and be a flat. Um, I put the hinge tape on the inside. The ailerons are actually plastic hinges, so nothing needed to be done there. So there's a couple pieces that I've already done. What I'm using for hinge tape is 3M. It's called Blendederm tape, or what we term as hinge tape. This stuff works really, really good. It's almost invisible, and you really can't see it. So um, first things first, I have um, the horizontal stab. I've already done one side of the horizontal stab. I don't know if you guys can see that in here. So it's kind of very, very faint. That side's already done. Um, I have to do this side. So how do I go about doing uh, taping of the hinges? So these are those foam hinges. E-Flight uses them. Obviously, FMS uses them. If you flex this thing enough, the seam cracks. The elevator comes off, the rudder comes off, whatever. So I take an old rag, sock, or whatever, and this is going to have some decals in there. I don't cut it. I don't remove it. I simply take this rag, and I literally press it into the seam to make sure that those decals are firmly applied. Then what I am going to do is I use a metal straight-edge ruler, and I am literally going to lay this thing next to it, and I am going to guesstimate. And guesstimation is a very scientific method of guessing. So literally, I am going to take this tape and I am going to lay it on my straight edge. So everything I do tonight, you're going to see if I fight with it, I fight with it. You're going to get it all. And I basically just guesstimate the size that I'm going to need. Don't stretch the tape. And I lay it on there. And I lay it on there because it's a clean surface. Again, zip tie on the X-Acto knife. And all I'm going to do is eyeball up my measurement. 
looks to be about that's the length I'm going to need and then get this thing out of the way. Now, I use another straight edge and I simply mark the width that I want. Um, again, the eyeball version, the old eyeballometer gets calibrated for all this type of sophisticated work. Make it as wide as you want. And then I just simply run the X-Acto knife down through there. And now what I have is a nice cut strip of blended derm tape. So I am going to take the side that I didn't do, which is right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And I am going to put this thing in there. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure your length is right. So if I have to cut it, I cut it. Length looks good. And you want to make sure that you have it tucked down all the way down in there. You have to make sure that this stuff gets tucked down into that seam. So what I use is a straight edge to push it down in there. So I will take this thing and basically work it underneath that control surface. And again, if I fight, you're going to see it. And I am going to eyeball that up on the surface. Right about there and tack it. So you can see this is the edge right now that I want. I want a lot of the tape here and I want a lot up there. But this edge I didn't tack. So all I am simply going to do now is to take this and push that. I think this thing's about as deflected as it'll get. So I'm going to take this thing now that it's sealed on that edge. And literally I can take this stuff and push this down in that crack. If it tacks, you can unpeel it a little bit. And I want this tacked way down in that seam because you don't want to create resistance in the joint. <laughs> he said joint. Anyway, so hope you can see that. We're going to push that stuff way down in there. You can see it just almost fell down in. And again, this, this horizontal stab is tapered. So I might have a little bit of tape sticking up here run that down through and then on the other edge I just simply push it back here so it's now sealed along that edge and there so if you have any trimming to do you can simply just cut trim the tape you can pull it out. You can do whatever you want. Now you can see I have a little bit of an edge there. So, because it's thinner down at this side than it is at the top side. So you can either just take it or roll it up. This stuff is actually pretty clear. So you're probably not even going to really see it if I were to do that. But just for the sake of getting rid of the excess and cleaning it up, we're going to cut that off there. All right, so that little bit's junk. And now I can just take my thumb, could seal that edge over there. And now I take this rag again, which is an old sock in my case, and I work that thing down in there. Now, if you don't do this, I can guarantee you that hinge joint's gonna break. I have a Viper that I pounded on. I got about a hundred flights out of it, flew it at the end of the season, hung it up in my trailer, and when I got home, I noticed half the flaps were coming apart. So I was literally one flight away from completely destroying that. And um, hopefully you can see that there in the camera. So that thing is now nice and that surface is completely sealed. And I'm just trimming up, trimming up the excess. So that adds some strength and stability in that joint so that one was that piece so fairly easy now the next one i have one more to do just so you get to see it i've done most of the other ones 
I mean, you can already see this is brand new and you can already see there at the edge, man, it's got a little bit already that's on there tearing. So we definitely want to make sure that we get this thing. So I have another piece of blended derm already cut. I'm going to simply take this and check it out. Length is a little short. So let me check my other piece here. So this blended derm is a little longer. Piece of foam stuck in there. Okay, so that's out. So I am literally going to take this stuff and lay it right at that edge there and crease it right there at that edge again you can lift this up and I am going to tuck this down into the crack so I've tried when I experimented with this tape a million times over as to what's the best me best method to do this and I tried like laying it on the edge of a ruler and I tried forming a V with it and I tried doing all kinds of stuff and I probably went through a whole roll literally just experimenting so what I found is the best thing for you to do is to literally just tack an edge and then to start working it towards the other side. Really work that stuff down in there. And again, other people may have other methods that they like and ways to do it. It's fine. I don't know that there's a right or a wrong way. good so now I'm just going to come across the back side push it down I'm going to take my old sock and I guess you can do this on both sides if you want to I don't I just do it on one and again you really need to do this before you ever even start flying the plane because I can guarantee you're going to have issues with it and my blades getting a little dull here so Probably replace it sometime soon, so that's junk. All right, so and that's what we look. Got a nice taped in surface in there. Um, that'll add that thing a little bit of strength, and it doesn't take up any room as long as you didn't, um, as long as you pushed it down in there in that crease, right? Okay, so um, I think now it's time that we got the hinges done, we can get rid of the straight edges, and let's get this thing uh, into the building process. So I'm going to flip this up and bring this thing back a little bit. So now I want to show you guys something. And if you want, comment. Uh, so do me a favor, leave comments in there at the bottom. I want to ask you guys a question. So hope you can see these. Uh, my cameraman uh, is off sick today. So normally he's down here filming with me. No, completely kidding. I don't have a cameraman. I do this stuff myself. I'm stuck using the old GoPro. So here is here are the stands that I make. So I want you to see these. So obviously PVC. There's nothing proprietary about this. So uh, anybody can build them. But at the end of the day, this is what I use for a lot of my jets or planes for transportation. And what I like about my design is I can fold this up. The little foamy things here, as you see, come right off. So you can really fold this thing up if you want to. But for planes, you can actually set them in the cradle like so, like this. And then for purposes of transporting, I use bungees and another piece of foam that literally you can stretch over one end 
and the other, and that thing will hold them in there with the canopy in there that'll hold that thing in. So you can actually adjust these per plane. So if you have something that has a large rudder that hangs off of the end over here, um, you can actually adjust these things. So I made the design so simply they have Velcro ends on them. So you can actually control the shape of the V, all right? You can lay it flat or bigger or whatever, keep it lower to the ground for a bigger model. Or if you have something with a tall rudder, you can close the shape of the V on the ends and simply with Velcro, you can change the V so it's more narrow, which lifts the plane higher off the air. And then you can do the same thing with the other side. Um, very quickly and easy, it's very secure. And then in transport, all you have to do is just put bungees around these to tie downs and the thing doesn't go anywhere. That's how I transport a lot of stuff in my trailer is simply in these holders and then they work well at the field. Tell me something, list me a comment. Do you like the stand? Do you like the idea? And if you were to go to a trade show, would you ever buy one of these things? Um, so I thought about making some and trying to sell them, you know, just uh, more or less as a side hobby than anything. But I don't know if people would buy them or if they would just say, hey, I'd rather just build it myself. A lot of people don't want bothered, but, um, you know, it takes a little bit into materials in them, but not a, a ton. So anyway, do me a favor, leave a leave a comment there on the bottom if you like the idea of the stand. And if that was something at a hobby, um, at like a hobby show or something, would you um, spend some money on buying them? And if you know, just out of curiosity, um, tell me what it would be worth to you. Like, um, you know, would you pay 20 bucks for it or 15 bucks for it? Or would you, you know, spend 25 bucks for one, you know, just trying to feel out the market. So anyway, um, <clears throat> looking for ideas. So let's go ahead and get this Futura put together. So we should be able to put the tail section on here. And I think I'm actually going to open this one up. Um, pretty far so I can get this down a little bit more for you to see it and the first thing that we're going to get together on here is the tail so I'm going to flip this thing over um, I guess I don't even probably need the stand to do this I set that over there so hopefully you can see that well we'll just check here all right so what I am going to put in now is I'm going to put the tail in and as you can see that we have connectors in here for the rudder and we have connectors for the elevator so all you simply have to do for this stuff is literally plug in 